Welcome to Clydebank High School Virtual Awards Ceremony. This last year has been a very challenging year and one that we will never forget. There are not many people within our school, our community, our country and indeed globally that have not been affected by this pandemic. However, you will see from this award ceremony that it did not stop many of our young people who showed great commitment and resilience two of our school values to continue to work hard and achieve their very best. To help them get there, I need to extend a huge thank you to all of the staff, the teaching staff, office, support staff, janitorial and canteen, for their hard work, commitment, enthusiasm and professionalism, and who will continue to go that extra mile for our young people. The delivery of high quality learning and teaching continues to be at the heart of everything we do whether that be online or face to face. And to you, the parents carers, I want to thank you for your continued support throughout this very difficult year. I feel immensely proud of the work that goes on in the school. Without the staff and parents, Clydebank High School would not be the ambitious and successful school that it is today. And to all of the pupils of Clydebank High School, my message to you is, Continue to develop your passion for learning, whether that is in the classroom or out. If you do, you will never cease to grow. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, the ability to triumph begins with you. Congratulations, we are all very proud of you and let's hope next year is a much more productive year. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Mrs Rooney, I'm Head of Butte House and I want to come in and introduce our Butte winners today. I am really, really proud of the commitment that all our pupils have shown. 
and I'm really pleased that we're getting this chance to do a virtual award ceremony. I have the privilege just now to introduce our winners for Butte House and with that I'm going to hand over to the list of names and our winners and give them a huge round of applause. Well done. Hello and welcome to Clydebank High School's award ceremony. My name's John Hand, I'm the Deputy Head of Davar House and I would like to welcome you all this evening. It has been a particularly difficult year for us, so it's a pleasure to see so many of your young people celebrating success tonight. I would especially like to welcome those from Devar House, who I am particularly proud of winning awards this evening. Hi, I'm Mr Downs, Head of Cumbria House. I just want to take this opportunity to congratulate all of our pupils for displaying outstanding resilience this year for what's been a really difficult year for learning both in school and out with school. I particularly want to congratulate all the Cumbria House winners and I get the privilege of introducing them and their names for all their awards this year. Well done. So what made me want to choose the career path 
or did it choose me? Well, actually, it chose me. When I left Clydebank High, I became a hotel receptionist at the Cameron House at Hargate Cross, uh, which is was above the Indian restaurant and opposite the Tesco's. So I found when I was at school, I really loved people. I really struggled with the academic classes and was later diagnosed with dyslexia, but I love people. So I always knew I would go into an industry that involved people. I then went into work in the world of sales. And again, that's a very people oriented skill. As a result of the work that I was doing in the companies, I discovered that small businesses really struggled to be able to learn how to sell and I took that as my mission. So really that's how I ended up running my own company at Sales Coaching Solutions to teach people how to sell. So what inspired me to become an entrepreneur was actually I found a love for business. I was always quite good, I enjoyed money, I enjoyed numbers and actually finding something I was passionate about and the love of money and numbers then meant I could become entrepreneurial and I've always been able to do things a little differently from other people. I um, set up my business while I was still working. So I was working part time and I set the business up and after I got the first couple of clients, things just took off from there. Eventually I gave up my job and I ran the company full time and I now employ people as well. So that's how it grew. So did I have any times when I wanted to quit and what kept me going? Yes, the answer is that I still some days think, oh, this is so hard, I can't do it. But like anything, like your studies, like your relationships with your family and your friends, it's about understanding why you do what you do. And when you focus on your why, then that's how you can keep focus. But I think it's really normal to have days that you do struggle, we all have them, but it's the secret is about picking yourself back up again. And the way you do that is focusing on why you do what you do. So the hardest thing that I had to overcome when I started The Entrepreneur's Godmother was my struggles with dyslexia, because I really struggled to read and I really struggled to write. And what I did was I surrounded myself with great people. I had a team of people who supported me and I think their um, knowledge, their confidence, and I work particularly well with young people because they inspire me so much. So that's what I did. I used those skills, worked with people, and that then took me on to the next level. So my experience of Clybank High was pure dead brilliant. I had a fantastic friendship group and I really, really enjoyed all aspects of school, even though I struggled with the academia. My favourite teacher was a gentleman called Mr Blackwood and he was a science teacher, but he ran the folk club. So I really enjoyed doing the extracurricular clubs and classes. And I can't sing, I'm really not great at singing, but I think it was just, I enjoyed the atmosphere, I enjoyed the people that were there, and Mr Blackwood was a real inspirer of me when I was at school. So the skills and qualities that helped me become a successful, first of all, was a real trier's attitude. So I can remember at school, I got one of the triers prizes. I became a prefect, even though I didn't have any qualifications. I was really tenacious. I was really positive. And I think those are skills that I took from Clybank High that actually see me through the whole of my life. So you've everybody has got something that they are fantastic at. You just have to dig deep and find the thing that makes your heart sing and then follow that path. And when the path gets hard, it's okay. All you have to do is focus on why you're on the path and it just becomes easier.
Hi guys, it's uh, Stephen Galone, aka Big Gal from Escapade Studios. Want to say a massive thank you to Amelia for inviting me in to be part of your day to celebrate and go over some awards. And I believe I've been asked some questions from some amazing students. So I'm going to go through my wee list of questions. Hopefully it can have or provide some value to you and you can take from it. And again, I want to thank everyone that took part in asking some questions that want to learn a little bit more about the creative industries and some of the stuff that I do. So my first question is from Gary Coulter in S2. Hello, Gary. And he's asking, how did I achieve everything? Well, um... It depends on what you mean exactly, Gary, but in terms of where I got to, or how I got to where I am, was massively down to mindset. Um, thinking the right things, reading the right books, surrounding myself with the right people. That's probably the best bit of advice someone told me a while ago, and that's probably the best advice I could give you. So depending on what it is you want to do, learn more about it, surround yourself with the right people, and have a good attitude when approaching these things and things will fall into place hopefully for you. Okay, so that's kind of how I got to where I'm at at the moment really was attitude, mindset and having good people. So thanks so much for the question. Next question comes in from Zenat Arshad in S6. Uh, thanks, thanks for the question. And does Stephen know how to beatbox? No, I did not expect this question. I did not expect a question like that. Um, I suppose not really, not greatly. Um, to be honest, my thing, I do a little bit of singing. I'm also part of a band and uh, I, you know, play music with some of my friends and I do a lot of rapping and I've rapped since I was in high school. So I'm more of a probably rapper, singer uh, than beatboxer, but beatboxing is cool. And I'd love to know, do you beatbox? Because if you do, I'd love to hear it. Another question coming in from Jessica Stewart in S1. Hello, Jessica. How are you not nervous going up in front of everyone? Right, so I, I imagine you're referring to when I do talks, when I do stand-up, when I do presentations. To be honest, it's because I've done it for so long. I've been on radio for years. I have always just enjoyed trying to entertain people from a, from a young, young age. Um, and then obviously running the studio for the last six years with Stephen Kirkwood and me and him have basically just thrown ourselves into different situations where we just had to try and be confident or at least act confident. Haven't always been like that, uh, but I think it is a case of if you do like talking to people and you are quite confident, you just have to keep working on it and that's what I've been doing for 10 years plus throwing myself at projects, whether it's filming stuff, helping people, or talking to amazing students like yourselves. Um, when I first started out, I was very nervous, don't get me wrong. When I done my first stand-up gig, I was so nervous, it was actually horrifying. Most stand-up gigs, I feel very nervous before it, but that's not a bad thing. Um, so I do feel nerves but I've just learned how to manage those nerves a little bit better over the years of practicing and practicing and practicing. So don't worry about feeling nervous or making a mistake or going wrong. You're human, I'm human, it's going to happen. Um, just make sure that you just keep practicing. And if you do do really bad and you feel really nervous, you've probably not prepared as much as you should have. So preparation's key as well, so make sure you prepare and you know what you're going in to do before you go and do it. That's probably the best thing there. So over years, I'm a lot more confident um, to do things like this, but don't get me wrong, still feel nerves. That's, uh, that's just a normal part of it. So thanks so much for the question, Jessica. I hope that helped. Adrian in S6, Adrian Griffith is asking, what's it like working for the BBC? Well, what is that like? It's a dream come true, to be honest. Uh, it was something I had thought about my whole life. And then when it happened, I couldn't quite believe it. Um, we've got lots of stuff in the pipeline. So we filmed a couple of things and then when the pandemic came along, a lot of it stopped. So we're now in talks again to get some more things going, which I'm very excited about. But it just felt like a dream come true. Being in the building, talking about content ideas with producers, and and then actually going out and filming it and then see them you know put it out there it, it was a really really cool experience to be honest 
and we're in talks to try and push some more stuff. So I'm excited for the future and um, it's everything I expected it to be. And to be honest, I feel like we haven't got started, so I'm really buzzing uh, to go ahead into the future and do some more work together with them. Uh, now I've got another question here, I don't know um, who it's from, it doesn't say on the sheet, so I'm really sorry whoever asked it, but it's an absolutely brilliant, brilliant question. Do you have to be naturally funny to be a comedian, or is it a skill you can learn? I'm not sure, I've always been told I was naturally funny from a young age, um, and I guess I've just worked on it. Then there's other people I can tell you that are really funny that I wouldn't say are naturally funny and they've learned the skill. So to be honest, yes, it absolutely is a skill you can learn, but also if you're born someone who is quite funny or a big character and confident, doesn't mean you should be lazy and just think, oh well, I was born that way, you know, I'll always be funny. Definitely not. You know, sometimes people I know that are naturally funny are actually terrible on stage. Um, and that was always my biggest fear, like, oh, am I just going to be a funny guy in conversations as opposed to on stage? So yes, you absolutely have to learn the skill, but it does help if you're already quite a big character or quite fun-loving anyway. Uh, but as I say, if you're not that, do not worry. Look at someone, you know, there's loads of great uh, examples, someone like a Mark Normand or something, an amazing American comedian, who is a very shy individual. Um, and he's worked on that skill of becoming a great comedian. So yeah, it's definitely a skill you can work on, as is anything. You just have to commit yourself and your time to it. Um, so absolutely, it's something you can learn, but you can also be born. You can, you, you, we all know someone is born pretty funny, but as I say, you don't want to then become lazy. So definitely, absolutely brilliant question, whoever that was. And finally, uh, from Caden Quinn in S2, what inspired you to become a podcast host? Well, I think that um, I love podcasts. It's um, that's probably the main type of media I consume. Um, I love listening to people's insights. I love learning stories about other successful people, or just learning alternatively than your your mainstream way of learning. I just find that there's stuff in podcasts that you won't find anywhere else and that's what really is special about them. So for us, we wanted to do something that was a little bit different in Scotland because there's not many people doing too many podcasts and we just wanted to bring to the table ways for you guys to learn from other creative people who are full time doing something that they love and they're passionate about and that ultimately is one of my biggest goals is to spread that message on to other people to go and chase something that they're passionate about and something that they want to actually do and I think a podcast is a great way of reaching it so if uh, Caden if you are at all thinking about doing a podcast at some point absolutely just go for it um, because you can see anyone really can make something of themselves now if they've got a good podcast so it was essentially to help others is what inspired me and Stephen to create a podcast and fill a gap and teach people stuff that you normally wouldn't learn from books or whatever it may be. So um, hopefully that helped. Again, thanks so much guys for asking me to do this. It's, uh, it's been a real honour. I hope you have had a, a great year. I know things have been a little bit different and a little bit strange, but it's good to see you are all hard at work. And anything I can do for you or anything we can do for you here at Escapade, we're happy to help anytime. So again, thanks very much and I hope this helped guys.
my name is Scott McEwen and I'm the Chair of the Claybank High Parent Council. I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate each and every one of you on the amazing achievement and gaining your awards, which really has been a remarkable effort in challenging circumstances for you and your families. I'd like to also take this effort on behalf of the Parent Council to thank Ms Lynham, the Senior Management Team, teaching staff for their amazing efforts in delivering the curriculum, which has been extremely challenging circumstances. Lastly, I'd like to thank all the office staff, support staff, catering teams and janitorial staff for their amazing efforts in keeping the school safe and operational, which really has been an amazing team effort. Stay safe and thank you. Hi everyone, John McGinn here, Aston Villa and Scotland midfielder uh, from Claybank, just along the road I'm sure from a lot of you. Uh, I'm here to answer some of your questions that your favourite teacher, Mr Woods, has given me. The first question is from Jamie Wilson. Uh, he asked me what was uh, my biggest sacrifice to become a professional footballer. Um, this one's easy. I think it was time away from my mates. Um, it would be training f three, four nights a week and that allowed me to kind of focus on football and get away from the many distractions that uh, can come along with, with living in the west of Scotland. So if you have aspirations of, of being a footballer uh, and you get offered um, whether it's a, a can of beer or, or a vodka, something when I was growing up I had to be brave and strong enough to say no to. So getting away from all of that was probably the biggest sacrifice I had to to make growing up and, and thankfully it stood me in good stead for the future. So thanks Jamie for the question. Questions two, three and four are from Scott Wilson so thanks Scott for the, the questions. First one is the favourite goal I've scored so that would be most recently. Um, I've been lucky enough to score a few decent goals but the, the goal for Scotland against Austria uh, managed to score an overhead kick so that was the favourite goal I've scored. I think every goal you score for your country is special, but I never thought I would would score an overhead kick, so probably that one. Uh, question three was, who was my role model growing up in football? And I think I had two. Uh, early on, it would have been Henrik Larsson. I used to go and watch all the Celtic games, so Henrik Larsson was, was first of all. And then when I started to get older, uh, my older brother Stephen, he started playing professional football for St Mirren and and then Watford, so I followed him everywhere with my dad and uh, I just wanted to be like him, so um, I would say those two. And question three was, uh, well question four, question three from Scott is, um, how did I find up growing up playing for St Mirren? That's a good question because I loved playing there, uh, an amazing club, brilliant training facilities and I think when I was younger it had a nice feeling of sort of boys club and um, kind of pro youth feeling to it so I got the best of both worlds and then when I when I played for the first team it was it was brilliant and unfortunately it ended badly with us getting relegated but we had some amazing memories like winning the cup and uh, and finishing eighth so uh, brilliant time at St Mirren and, and one I'll look back for now. We've just got some more questions here from one's from Murray Craig. <laughs> Murray's asked me how did I become so good? Um, and then he's asked, what is the most challenging thing you've had to deal with as a footballer? So Murray, I don't think I can answer the first one. Uh, I'll let you decide how good I am. Um, I would tell you I'm not so good, but... I think just practice. Um, I was always playing football, whether that was my mates or, or with St Mirren when I was younger. So just practice and then obviously the more you practice and the more you try at something, the better you become. So that and then... The most challenging thing uh, I've had to deal with in football is probably um, last season when I broke my ankle. Um, broke my ankle in a freak sort of accident against Southampton. Um, and from that, it was sort of my first serious injury uh, and I didn't know if I was going to be the same again afterwards, but thankfully I didn't need any surgery and uh, I just let the healing process take place. And Thankfully, I've recovered from that, but at the time, you do worry that uh, the injury can affect your career so that's the most challenging thing thanks for the question Murray and another question from Holly McMullen in first year when did you become a footballer that's a great question 
I've always I've always played football, Holly, but um, I made my professional debut when I was 18 uh, against Celtic. Um, I came on as a sub, so that was me, a professional footballer, and a day I'll, I'll never ever forget. But since the age of um, three, four, I remember playing football, but I remember signing for St Mirren when I was when I was very young, and from there. You're not really a footballer, you, you obviously have dreams and aspirations of it, but it's not until you actually play that first professional game where it, it truly sinks in that you, you've become a footballer, which I've always dreamed about doing. So thanks for the question, Holly, and the answer to that is, is when I was 18. And Brendan Fox in second year has asked me, if you had to move to another club in the Premier League, what team would you choose? Brendan, it's a good question, right? But you just one thing I've learned in football is you never know who's watching or listening. So I'm sure my employers, Aston Villa, would not like me to talk about another team, uh, about moving to another club. And actually, I've I've just recently signed a long term contract, so I'm really happy where I'm settled on and off the park. And hopefully, we can keep getting better with Aston Villa, and I'm I'm going to be a big part of that. Hopefully, so. I'm dodging the question, and if anybody wants to be a football player, then I'm sure you need to get used to dodging that question. Cheers, Brendan. Hi, Greg. Um, Greg's the last question. Greg in first year, Greg Newman. Um, and Greg's asked me, what other way that's not football would you like to represent Scotland? Whoa. It's a good question. And I'm sure I'll be very popular here. Uh, if I can't go for football, then I would have to go for Warzone, Call of Duty. Um, maybe play it a wee bit too much, but um, if I could represent Scotland at Call of Duty or, or Warzone, then I would give that a bash. I like to spend that, uh, spend my time away from football playing that. It's a brilliant game and I just wish I was good at it. So that answers your question, mate, and thanks for the question. <laughs> 